Right, if you will open again to what I read earlier, I had it to speak today again. What Dole said, I'm just going to add to. Ephesians 1, I'm going to begin in verse 16. It says, cease not to give thanks for you. This is the Apostle Paul speaking of the Ephesians. Making mention of you in my prayers. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you. This is what Paul is asking for them. The spirit of wisdom. And the revelation in the knowledge of him. Paul is asking God to give them the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. The knowledge of him. And he said, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened. Like we pray, Father open our eyes. That you may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to usward who believe Amen. to usward who believe the greatness of that power to usward who believe and where did that usward that believe where did that power come from through the spirit of wisdom and revelation of the knowledge of him. I want to I remind us. That Jesus. When he was on the earth. Couldn't do a single miracle. Until he, until he was filled with the Holy Ghost. He couldn't do a single miracle. The son of God. Could not do a single miracle. Until he was filled with the Holy Ghost. And then he says in John. He was telling his disciples. He said it is expedient. That I go away. It is necessary that I go to the cross, that I be buried, that I be raised again. It is necessary that I go back to where I was, where I came from, heaven, so that I can send you the Holy Ghost. Jesus knew the disciples and us couldn't do a single thing without that Holy Ghost. Oh, you can walk in the spirit of Jesus and you can have miracles, but you are not going to walk in the kingdom until you get that Holy Ghost. And we, why? Because Jesus said that Holy Spirit will lead you and guide you into the knowledge and revelation of Jesus. The knowledge and revelation of Jesus. Oh, you can have Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John memorized up here, and it won't do you a bit of good. But when that Holy Ghost starts revealing it down here in your heart, in your spirit, things start to happen. Beautiful, wonderful, tough things start to happen. I was in prayer this last Thursday. I, I've been in prayer every day. The Holy Ghost has given me a situation to pray about. And I can see the wisdom of God giving me something that wasn't going to happen in two days. I do. I remember several years ago, Dole and I were talking. And Dole said to me, square on, he said, Kathy, you have the faith. What you need is patience. Great. Do you know what? You don't want to pray for patience. Because then things happen. And you're not going to overcome them in two days. But... God took that word that Dole had for me and he started changing me. He started me putting in me in situations that I was going to need patience to get the answer, to get the promise. What is patience? It just means continuance, not stopping. Amen. Not stopping. I was in I, the situation that I've been praying about. I haven't heard anything. That the Spirit of God is strong in my heart. I love it. I love praying in the Spirit. I love walking in the Spirit. I love when God leads you, shows you revelation, how to take the next step. And I was, I was praying Thursday evening. And, and I was praying about this situation. It came back up in my heart. I love it. Because there, there's faith there. And while I was praying about this situation, that I hadn't heard anything in a month, but I knew that God gave me this project, this, this deal to pray for. And while I was praying, revelation came. 
And the Spirit of God said to me, Kathy, don't you take no for an answer. Whoa. In a moment, I knew in the Spirit exactly what he was saying. He said, Kathy, don't you take no for an answer. You know why? Because of Ephesians 1. That God would give unto you the spirit of wisdom and the revelation, the revelation down here of the knowledge of him. You know what I got down here? I got the gospel. I know down here that Jesus on the cross, surely he has borne my sicknesses and carried my diseases and yours too. Surely he has. You know what? It's not up here. It's down here. I have a revelation of the knowledge of Jesus. Surely he bore our sicknesses, our diseases. Surely he carried our pains. The chastisement of our peace. What the necessary punishment to get our peace was put on the body of Jesus. You know what? I know that down here. I know that down here. The peace, the chastisement of the peace of, of us was put on the body of Jesus. And by his stripes, we are, were healed. I know that down here. And God in that instant said, you know that, Kathy. Don't you take no for an answer. If I know that I am free from the devil, then I don't take no for an answer. If I know that my sins have been forgiven and put on the body of Jesus, I don't take no for an answer. Why? Because that's what happened. That is the truth. If, if, if Jesus said, surely... He has carried our sicknesses. And I know that down here, I got that knowledge. Then I don't take no for an answer until I'm healed. It is so fun, folks, to stand up. It is so fun to stand up against God and the devil at the same time. And say, it is written. It is written. You have to do this. You have to. I will not take no for an answer. You have to. Why? Because you already supplied everything needed you the price has already been paid the sacrifice has already been given and that sacrifice of Jesus on the cross death and resurrection that resurrection proves to us that that sacrifice was accepted by God the only thing left is the promise manifested. I love it. God said, Kathy, talking about himself, don't you take no for an answer. You know what? I got this. I got this. Oh, I was so excited when I heard that. I hadn't heard anything. I got a call on Friday. I got a call. I was walking in the fellowship hall praying about this situation. I get a phone call. We have heard. Things are moving. Beautiful things are moving. I wish I could tell you, but I can't. But there will be a day I know I'll stand here and tell you the story of how God, the power of my God. I have a word in my tongue. It says, for thy glory, Lord. For thy glory. Not mine, not anybody else's. For thy glory, Lord. Oh, we're going to see it. It is moving. The tide is turned. I love it. I love it. What? Do you have that knowledge down here? Do you know in your heart that Jesus bore your sicknesses and your diseases? Do you know that he bore everybody's? Do you know he bore your mama's? Do you know he bore your father's? Ken, don't you take no for an answer. Amen? Amen? Do you know that down here? Then don't take no for an answer. Turn with me. You said this woman's crazy. Turn with me to 2 Corinthians 1.18. But as God is true, our word towards you was not yea and nay. This is the Apostle Paul speaking about this gospel. For the Son of God, Jesus Christ, 
who was preached among you by us, even by me and Silvanus and Timotheus, was not yea and nay, but in him was yes. For all the promises of God, healing, prosperity, security, benefits, peace, all the promises of God in Jesus are yes, and in him, amen, unto the glory of God, unto the glory of God, unto the glory of God. Some of you think, I can't let God do this because it would make me look special. Oh, please. For thy glory, Lord. For thy glory, Lord. For thy glory, Lord. Whose glory? The Lord's glory. He's the one that paid for it. He's the one that sacrificed himself. He's the one that suffered for it. He's the only one that gets the glory. And if you won't let him have any glory, what is wrong with you? You know, back when I was a teenager, there was a woman. I've got to say this because some of you have heard of her. And she was, she ended up in an accident. She was a quadriplegic. And she decided to give glory to God by painting with her mouth. She was offered to be prayed for. You know what? She couldn't give up her glory for the glory of God. She couldn't give up being special by being able to paint with her mouth than to have God get the glory. For thy glory, Lord. For thy glory, Lord. When we use that gospel, when we don't take no for an answer, God gets the glory. Jesus said, ask anything in my name and I will do it so the Father gets glory in the Son. Take no for an answer. That's what God told me. Don't take no for an answer. The situation is done. I just have to pray till I see it. And things are moving. Oh, wonderful things are moving. Things that you never believed would move. I can't wait, Jesus, to give you all the glory. Amen? We're going to worship God here for a little bit. Don't take no for an answer. You were healed when Jesus was raised from the dead. You were given a job when Jesus was raised for the, from the dead. You were made prosperous when Jesus was raised from the dead. Your children were given to God when Jesus was raised from the dead. Amen. Don't take no for an answer. Amen? Amen.